streams in the desert. You know, every day we all face confrontation. Part of the idea of confrontation is simply being made aware of something that is coming to you or at you and that you don't have to react to it in an equal and opposite reaction but you can choose to absorb a lot of what the person may be hostile or angry or upset about something because Jesus didn't cast away people that came to him with misconceptions he just simply stated the facts and let the person decide from that moment on what they would do where they would go and what they would do with what he said now that doesn't mean that they always were ready to hear what jesus said because he made some pretty blunt statements like the Sermon on the Mount and other things. And what they would do is they would think about it later and they would discuss it among themselves and then come back to hear more of what he had to say and then decide at some point in time to follow him. And a lot of times in our lives, as we walk with God, it takes time to understand and realize what Jesus is saying to us. So if you find yourself sometimes in, you know, butting heads, you know, against something, picture this. Remember if you've ever seen them, you know, two big giant horned rams that are just, they lean back, they jump back on their haunches, and then bam, and they keep smacking each other and smacking each other. And how silly that looks sometimes, doesn't it? To see who's bigger. Imagine if Jesus was a sheep. Or imagine that Jesus walks there and says, I want you rams to be sheep and they're butting heads. Often, we can't control conflict, but how we react to it is our choice. Part of reading our devotionals and having a devotional time is being prepared for those confrontations that come our way in our day. For we, through the Spirit by faith, wait for the hope of righteousness. There are times when things look very dark to me, so dark that I have to wait even for hope. It is bad enough to wait in hope to see no glimmer of a prospect and yet refuse to despair. To have nothing but night before the casement and yet to keep the casement open for possible stars. To have a vacant place in my heart and yet to allow that place to be filled by no inferior presence. That is the grandest patience in the universe. It is Job in the tempest. It is Abraham on the road to Moriah. It is Moses in the desert of Midian. It is the Son of Man in the Garden of Gethsemane. There is no patience so hard as that which endures as seeing him who is invisible. It is the waiting for hope. Thou hast made waiting beautiful. Thou hast made patience divine. Thou hast taught us that the Father's will may be received just because it is his will. You have revealed to us that a soul may see nothing but sorrow in the cup and yet may refuse to let it go, convinced that the eye of the Father sees farther than its own can. Give me this divine power of yours, the power of Gethsemane. Give me the power to wait for hope itself, to look out from the environment where there are no stars, and give me the power when the very joy that was set before me is gone, to stand unconquered amid the night and say, to the eye of my Father it is perhaps shining still. I shall see the climax of strength when I have learned to wait for hope. Strive to be one of those so few who walk the earth with ever-present consciousness, all mornings, middays, star times, that the unknown, which men call heaven, is close behind the visible scene of things. In all that occurs, in all that happens, in all of your day, whether morning, noon, or night, or at any way, shape, or form that it comes to you, God is in control. He has determined what will apply and what will fit into your day and has so known ahead of time by his omniscience and omnipresence and omnipotence that the circumstances of your life can be arranged as he's planned them out for you to bring you to a place of dependency upon him. Because you see, 
independence is not what God intended for man. God intended to walk in fellowship with man, and he did so in the garden in the cool of the day. And man trusted God because God was his creator. The idea of independence came from Satan, where it was a determination for Satan to be like God and to make himself as God. And that's where the whole idea of being independent comes from, being separate from God. And the only thing that's really separate from God, literally, will be the lake of fire when he casts hell and the fallen angels and those who rebelled against him there. But for us who have a salvation given to us freely by Jesus Christ, we must become dependent upon God. He never chose for us to be independent of himself. He chose to live inside us and to make us one with himself. And being in unity with God is a dependency upon us to seek him daily and to walk with him throughout our day so that we would know him not just in the morning, but at noon and at night and in every circumstance and situation, seek his will to be done and not our own. It's not enough sometimes to just simply get back in the morning and say, okay, God, thy will be done all day long and I'm just going to go about my way. Because that's belligerence. In every circumstance, we are told to look to God, the maker of our salvation, and to find from Him the direction that He would have us to go. And so today, when you find yourself in some confrontation, look to the Lord. Look to Jesus. Because he will, he promised, and he said that he would show you the way. Don't fight it. Just ask him what to do.